All right, everybody, it's our Clow here, and very excited to be back and uh, have the opportunity to put together this video for all of you. And this particular presentation, frankly, is a long time coming. Um, it's largely based in a long held notion of mine that I am uh, certainly not alone in. It's this idea that there is something very dangerous and very destructive in the water and there's something beyond that strange and uh, very compelling about the water of course it is the keystone for life as we know it and covers most of the earth as we know it as well with areas that are outside the reach of the sun of course that's interesting because right so much of this occult energy and information is put in this idea of sun worship, solar phallic worship. And so then to think about the right polar opposite of that down in the abyss of the ocean, um, where sun does not penetrate the evils, quote unquote, that may be lurking down there waiting for us. Um, so the why as to all of that um, and, you know, just more substantiating stuff will become apparent throughout this video. And to make that point, uh, we'll be looking at uh, NASA, Hollywood, uh, bringing it up to, of course, President Trump and all of the things that are currently going on. But in order to effectively make this point, there is a fair amount of um, background that I kind of want to put together here. Um, first and foremost, this idea of the ushering in of the new world that is the right turning over of the world as we know it um, is largely connected with this idea of uh, the age of Aquarius, right? The water bearer. And so all befitting to have some water element in the overturning of everything. And another idea that was crossing my mind is that I feel we're really heavily conditioned to worry about something coming from the sky that causes our destruction whether it be a giant comet or meteor or alien invasion, a nuclear bomb, of course, coming from the sky, any number of things that you could think of, another planet crashing into it, right, whatever, um, but something from the sky, fire raining down, um, this whole death from above notion. And with all of that energy be, being put there, there's also the further energy that we're always encouraged to always be looking outward right gazing upon the infinite of the universe and you know yes it's 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 wondrous this and that um but you know really uh gives us no direct benefit here considering all of the problems that we realistically face on a daily basis on an hourly basis in our communities um and so of course this idea of the new world order is really always perpetuated by our indulgence in these other things um, and i'll expand on that more as we go uh, but so in any case it makes all the more sense for me for something to come from the water um, and we'll of course look through you know hollywood's conditioning of that through its countless films uh, telling us to fear the water and how that has really been, you know, uh, put into us. But before, before I get into any of that, I want to start again on just this fundamental level of thinking about its connection here with the occult and that water is a natural mirror. And of course, um, throughout occultic circles and just uh, research, you find that reversing things is a very prevalent theme um, and especially for those in the know now I want to reiterate this again just on a very basic level here uh, but with this single release from the who back in 1973 again this is one of the most renowned uh, bands really of the modern world um, and you have the single here 515 which uh, many of you may know is the prophetic number of the apocalypse from Dante's Divine Comedy. Now, what makes this more compelling is and when we look at the B side here is water. So we have this apocalyptic number and then water, the natural mirror. Of course, 515 is the same forwards and backwards. But 
showing you right that there is this connection here when we start to look now granted that there are countless movies on this I had to just pick a handful here and the one I want to start with is James Cameron's The Abyss right this was a very big film when it came out there's a lot of controversy over uh, edits that happened in between it it was actually re-released later um, but it also lays an important foundation in connecting us to this idea of the abyss which we'll talk about um, throughout the video today and it also has elements um, that will remain current throughout some of the films as well including um, confrontation with Russia nuclear weapons of some sort and this whole notion of being at conflict again underwater um, and what I want you to see here and I think this is important to note with the abyss since it has everything to do with uh, humans encountering aliens underwater is that water is actually an anagram for ET war as in extraterrestrial war now why I feel that's so interesting in connection with this film is because when it was re-released with its extended ending and so to show you over here uh, the material that was then included you can see that they play up the conflicts that were occurring between the US and the Soviet Union and you also see that they show the main character images of war and aggression from news sources around the globe and then create massive mega tsunamis threatening the world's coast and stopping them though before they hit but so why this is interesting that they're showing him these uh, news sources of right this violence and aggression is on that same day uh, February 26, 93 is the 1993 World Trade Center bombings, right, in which uh, Ramsey's Yusuf drives a truck underneath North Tower of the World Trade Center and tries to, right, he sets off a bomb successfully and tries to bring the North Tower down from below, all right, you see... Um, this idea that's coming across there with something silent coming from down below, right? This truck bomb that is parked there, and then they leave. But so, take a look at this over here, and this whole scenario is really just absurd when you look into what they have here for the information. So Yusuf here is said to be the uh, mastermind of this plot and you can see it says that he spent time at an al-qaeda training camp in afghanistan so <laughs> immediately you can see that this is complete bullshit because that organization has been proven time and again to be funded by the united states and used as a means to perpetuate its own agenda throughout different regions of the world but so read further here though and you see that Yusuf's uncle Khalid Shaki Muhammad al Fadin, um, who was later considered the principal architect of the 9-11 attacks a title given to him by those who wrote the 9-11 commission report and you really should get the picture that this is all a part of their scheme and this was really just a preamble to what would follow in 9-11 but you can see here Yusuf's uncle gives him advice and tips over the phone helps fund the whole endeavor on and on right and so to show you though and this is really just a, a particular side note to me that I want to reiterate here with how they're constantly inverting these ideas of good and bad look at this name Ramsey Yusuf um, because if we look at the name Ramsey and we translate it you can see that it translates from rams and again now I'm thinking ram head as in goat of Mendes um, but look here you have sign symbol code you also see meanings of it being reserved demure or quiet now again thinking about a man who parked a bomb underneath a tower to bring it down right that's a very quiet way of going about it as opposed to what happened in 9-11 but that last name as well Yusuf stands out to me and I'll leave you this article because it is really fascinating 
about the misconceptions of the idea of Lucifer and how just everything is, of course, right, not as it seems. But um, it's this really fascinating bit talking about the letter J not existing when the Bible was written, so the names being different, and that Jesus would have actually been Yeshua ben Yosef. Now, I was looking around with this name, playing with it a bit, um, and so if we go forward here, you can see that it is the Hebrew equivalent of Yusuf. And when we go back here, you can see that Yusuf is often transliterated as Yusuf, as in our mastermind behind this plot, right, of the 93, or excuse me, it's over here, but the 93 World Trade Center attacks. You can also see here that this just psychological level, you have God increases in piety, power, and influence. But again, um, this ultimate idea here would be that you have the ram for the first half of his name, the quote-unquote satanic aspect of it, and then you have Yusuf, the Christ aspect of it. So they're always messing with your mind, all right? Um, and so you can read through here uh, about how he anticipated his plan to work, that the North Tower would then crash into the South Tower, bring everything down. Um, somewhere in here it talks about there was the smoke went up 93 uh, stories and so of course we've got all these 1993s but there you go bomb caused smoke to rise up to the 93rd floor of both towers of course that being the master thelemic number um, but again the important point here connecting this back to the water bit um, is that this is the same day um, that the abyss right releases all of the extended of what was not in the original cut they bring it out on the same day that they have this attack and it's actually in theaters but only in Hollywood and New York so there's one okay let's keep going here though let me make sure I'm all caught up I want to start talking about NASA's Nemo project of course the underground, under, excuse me, not underground, underwater, world's only underwater research uh, station is named Aquarius. And so again, tying to this idea of the age of Aquarius. Um, and what I really want to show you here is some information just going along with their seal. And I like too how our world's only underground research station, we just have this <laughs> horrible photo where it's not even all the way in you know the frame but let's take a look at that logo because it does bother me and there's some important things in it um, that'll just really make all of this resonate strongly especially with these dualistic ideas we're talking about so take a look here this is their logo with the uh, morning star or star of Bethlehem the upper left over here um, and I'll leave you some articles if you're not familiar with the uh, connotations of that but of course both ideas of Luciferian and Christ ideas work itself in there and then on the opposing end down in the water here um, you have the inverted triangle and so of course uh, the symbol for water um, again what I want you to see is the as above so below symbolism that just jumps right out to me when I'm looking at this and again contrasting these ideas but since this is underwater and since water is a natural mirror as I was talking about and this is right reversing things is a big part of the understanding these occult pieces take a look at what happens when we invert this or excuse me when we reverse it um, we get quite clearly here this NWO and you'll notice here that these E's are not connected, right? Those are two groups of three. So that's actually a nice 33 hanging out right in the middle for you, okay? And then, of course, you again still have this uh, same sort of symbolism here, moon above, all these things, dualistic nature of the colors, of the waves. But very importantly, that NWO backwards, own forwards, because, again, they own this world quite clearly. And again, those nice 33s for you there. Um, but so there's Nemo's logo broken down for you. Very interesting to me. Um, and what's also very interesting to me is when I was looking into this, I just want to include 
Um, it says here off Key Largo in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. So I was playing around uh, with Google Earth, and this is uh, when I had typed in the Florida Keys bit there, um, the area that it took me to. And I just want, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. I did want to just include it because I thought it was very just uh, bizarre and ominous looking, but to me quite a sinister face um, hidden underneath the water there. So I'll just zoom out so you can see um, exactly where this is, All right? But over here, you can see this is where they say the actual Aquarius habitat is. If I were to zoom out, you could see it is off the coast of Key Largo. Can zoom in. There's weird stuff with Google Earth. I usually don't really play with it. So I don't want to spend too much time speculating about things that I kind of might see um, in the water there because I don't want to detract from any of this. But so let's take a look at some of the coding for Nemo program. All right. And it's just very interesting to me because outright we do get these notions to Illuminati, Illusion, Satan's seal. And of course, since I was just comparing and contrasting it with the Goat of Mendes, um, hopefully that's resonating with you. But I also want you to see here, it references the Cliffoth, which is the inverted tree of life, right? The uh, forces said to drive us towards uh, destruction, annihilation, all the negatives in this world, but again, what give balance ultimately to it as well. Um, but very important with the path of Teth, again, connected with Our Lady Babylon, uh, which we'll get into more today. Again, um, catch up if you're not familiar with that concept. But look down below here because these ideas of revelations, hidden knowledge, the Holy Grail, blood sacrifices are all very compelling to me, especially when we put it in touch with, again, just still in that same batch of coding, Commander in Chief and the bullet catch, of course, that commander in chief being Trump and the bullet catch being the reference to all the research I did with him and David Blaine. But bear with me here. Keep moving. I want you to see this four of cups reference here because this is actually a really important card in the scheme of things. So this is a wonderful sight. I'll leave it for you. But notice this card is called luxury. Now, you can see here he has it connected to these ideas through and through um, that the four that this card is associated with stems are the number of manifestation of the dryad and it is also secretly preparing catastrophe by emphasizing individuality. And I want to really reiterate that because that's really a point that we're stuck in, it seems right now, um, as just a modern society and that the individual is giving way too much credence to themselves. It is obviously important to be an individual, but not at the expense of the collective, especially when it is over petty and trivial matters. Of course, those are subjective terms. Um, but so many things right now show us um, that the, the individual just bullying the collective, just a complete inversion there, um, is not at all beneficial for the state of things. But I want you to see as well um, just these ideas through and through and looking at this card talking about things being in a calm state more or less, right? We're not in an all-out war and there is much luxury to our world. Um, but that it's symbolic of the hit being on its way, the destruction of things, okay? So again, he connects it to all these ideas, including being below the abyss, which again, just a few minutes here, will really expand that for you. Um, but talking about its connection to all things proceed from order to disorder. Um, and so I'll leave this for you because it is a really fascinating read. And there's so much I have to cover, I'm a little distracted. Um, but so let's keep going with Key Largo though. Um, since this is where this underground base is located, it's very interesting to me, right? K and L, it's our 11th and 12th letters. When we play around with them a bit, um, with numerology, we can either get this 222 if we keep things pretty straight with it. And of course, that's a very compelling number to me. 
that is going to be um, August 10th this year. I did flag it months ago um, in my Trump video, uh, talking about him and Stormy Daniels uh, before that was really <laughs> at the scale that it was, or excuse me, is now still so prevalent. But notice here, it's also the same day since we're on this underwater kick today, and I want to talk about Trump and Shark Week. Um, just so interesting to me that the movie The Meg is going to be released that day. Um, of course, this is going to be about the Megalodon, right? This prehistoric monster of a shark, um, and it's right going to be terrorizing humans, this and that. But of course, T and M from the Meg 20 plus 13 gives us a nice 33. Both those words are also three letters, so there you have it again. Um, so you know, of course, just all over the board with that. It's a very important signature to be able to identify. But I want you to see here, let's take a look at the words themselves. So key, right, okay, self-explanatory, and now largo. Now this is defined as slow in a broad, dignified style. Now keeping this in tune with our underwater thoughts, I think the Jaws theme song, right, one of the most, um, I think, known uh, pieces of music from a movie, right, so often parodied and just kept in everybody's mind. Um, but I'm going to get into Jaws later and Spielberg because they're really pivotal um, and paramount pieces to all of this. But again, that slow build, right, because that mu the music, it picks up, it goes faster and faster. But now, just to lay out a little more, because we have this James Bond movie, Thunderball, and it is uh, held to be the most successful Bond film, uh, most financially successful in the series in North America when ingested for ticket price inflation. So again, this idea of these very, very successful movies being in people's minds. Now take a look at the plot here, um, because we have the involvement of these atomic bombs, the US, Russia, and the right destruction of something, right? And it's, they're talking about Miami, which happens to be right real close to Key Largo. So again, all of these ideas really overlapping for me. But Spectre, this is an interesting piece here just to tie it into how it is actually supposed to represent Russia. You can see here that it was um, originally this idea of the Soviet Smirsh. Um, and so you can see in here um, that in the series, Smirsh is replaced with Spectre, a global terrorist organization. Um, <laughs> and so... They're just trying to veil it, but it's still there. And of course, you can look at the Spectre logo here. It's an eight tentacled octopus, uh, not at all out of the grounds of what we would see in elite symbolism. And particularly interesting as well, um, the head of it does look very extraterrestrial. But so, you know, really all of that, very interesting, right? Just these, these ideas keeping together, but Let's get back to NASA and Nemo, though, um, because, again, it just brings up all sorts of ideas for me. And somebody had looked into, um, and I've seen this uh, a few places, but again, hugely successful movie, Finding Nemo, and these ideas of the abyss. Now, I'll leave you this link, even though I don't really um, agree with some of their interpretations, but they do bring up some good points that deserve credit. Um, and part of it being identifying these three relevant chapters to their research, 10, 11, and 12, which we, we add together, we do get that nice 33 again, um, but titled The Abyss, right, for chapter 10 there. So, of course, um, that being the fortune card, the wheel card in the uh, tarot deck. But so you can take a look at this here. And it's interesting because they have this idea of the demon fish down in the abyss of the ocean and comparing that to Crowley's Quranizen. Um And so take a look at this, though. It says that he is the dweller in the abyss. He is there as the final obstruction. If he is met with the proper preparation, then he is there to destroy the ego, which allows the adept to move beyond the abyss. If unprepared, then the unfortunate travel traveler will be utterly dispersed into annihilation. And so they compare that in the film with this fish down below uh, having the light on its head, this idea of the light bearer again, Luciferian, um, trying to lure them to their annihilation. So I thought that was an excellent catch um, and definitely uh, deserved to be mentioned in this. But so 
I want to give a little more context to the importance of Nemo here because I'm going to use it to really project into the next part of this presentation. But so notice uh, we're in the Thelemopedia here talking about the city of the pyramids as the mystical home to the adepts that have crossed the great abyss, having spilled all their blood in the grawl of Babylon. And so, you know, to keep this tied in with this, um, all this research I've shown you, notice how that already goes right back here to this Nemo program coding in which we had these ideas of Holy Grail, blood sacrifices, and dark goddess, of course. Uh, thinking about Our Lady Babylon, this is where you have her right here. She's um, used as that logo. Um, but so notice, it compares it to the idea of destroying their earthly ego identities and becoming nothing more than piles of dust, the remaining aspects of their true selves without the self-sense of I, and became impregnated as a babe within Babylon. Now, this is interesting with these ideas of dust and being turned to children if you compare it to what was going on in Infinity War, right? Marvel's really mega movie this year, um, which did become right one of the uh, biggest movies of all time as far as theatrical release. So again, these ideas being projected in so many ways that, you know, you just... <laughs> Yeah, it's relentless. But so let's keep going here. Within, they take on the name or title of Saint or Nemo, which is Latin for no man. All right, so I'll leave you this link and you can look at uh, Crowley's exploration of this idea and its connections to the ideas of Jupiter as well. Um, and again, a classic misdirection there with, you know, where we're told to put our energy as far as worrisome planets. Um, but take a look at this over here because this ties in our ideas of Our Lady Babylon and Nemo. Um, and you can see, I'll just leave it for you to read because I've covered this countless times. Uh, but in the third paragraph, Crowley's commentary telling us of this reference to Nemo as the no man. Um, and so let's jump back. And take a look at just again, we're still looking at that word Nemo mirroring it backwards we have the word omen right it's a big piece of what we're talking about so in the hbo show the wire man named nemo breeds pigeons as a very minor character only seen a handful of times but he's affiliated with marlo stanfield and so for those of you familiar with the show um, this is a man who imposes his will upon everybody at any cost without any hesitation or any question to it all right he ends up running essentially the crime world of baltimore um and so again the importance of the pigeons being connected here and with that name of his his pigeon breeder being nemo and just all these other things floating around i'm thinking to myself there has to be something with pigeons um and so let me show you something one of the things that i had typed in here was trump pigeon Okay, and the very first thing that comes up is, you know, all these images of him, obviously Photoshop, but it's this article from The Onion, again, controlled by the same elites, a satirical outlet, the same people that give the okay on their articles, give the okay to independent articles or whoever, right? But so important that they're pushing this. Um, but what I want you to see is down below in these searches related to Trump Pigeon, uh, the second bit is Trump will be dead soon. And so how peculiar is that? I mean, that's, <laughs> for me, very telling. And again, just taking a look at the images um, that are connected to it there. But pigeons themselves definitely warrant your attention. Um, I know it sounds funny, but they are connected to royalty, to wealth, to intelligence. To So I, I got the most, uh, what I feel, neutral source I could on pigeon information. <laughs> um, a pigeon Control Resource Center. And I want to leave you this article. I just want you to take a look through it. Um, and just see the major role that they really have played over the centuries um, and how they really are deeply embedded in everything and of course their uh, connection to the Bible coming to Noah um, right the dove and the pigeon are essentially 
the same bird um, and there's a lot of crossover in their symbolism um, but again Noah of course being uh, the bit where we you know it's our monitoring it's of the ocean the central governmental NASA uh, which right not to be trusted obviously that name Noah right getting that bird when it's saying that the water was done ravaging the earth things will be okay again um, and in any case here though I'll leave you this article so you can see um, but one of the things that it would get into is telling us this idea about um, the queen and her fascination with pigeons and Elvis the king right Presley's obsession with pigeons as well and it's just this idea that they're actually a very intelligent bird and something that you know I really want to put in here since we're talking about water as such an important thing today pigeons have been found to be able to pass the mirror test one of only six species and the only non-mammal that has the ability to do so as well as to be able to recognize all 26 letters of the English language and con conceptualize usually you call somebody a pigeon brain as an insult right again this is this misdirection in so many ways but so this article is just to show you about the queen spending all of this money to build this loft for these birds um, and it talks about her connections to this organization um, the national pigeon something or other but what's most fascinating to me is this article that I found um, talking about how the king of the Belgians gave racing pigeons to the queen's forebears as a gift and that she right maintains her interest after all of that so again the illuminati sort of connections with that i'm going to leave you this article um so you can just again see the how it all fits together okay but very fascinating to me at the end of the day um, and another big piece here, um, and this is not only on this How Stuff Works, but this is also on our uh, hopefully neutral source over here, <laughs> the pigeon control that um, the Rothschilds actually gained um, a good significant por portion of their riches through exploiting pigeons, talking about their lofts, um, and again, how the Rothschilds, again, one of these families, uh, that arguably runs the world as we know it um, utilizes pigeons and why they're so important in ways right so you have these pigeon gram stamps that would go along with you know what they were utilizing them for in many ways and again they just have this very uh, occultic feel to them uh, of course the pyramidal shape is very bizarre and interesting um, but so let's keep going here just a couple more things on these damn birds um, because it just ties into so many things that I had talked about in the past um, in Mars attacks right uh, as I talked about a few years ago it was the whole reason that the aliens decided to start killing everybody was when we released the dove the pigeon um, and it's just so interesting to me as well at the point in the movie flagged here can you believe this? I'm sorry, said, there's an actual pigeon movie database out there that you can search uh, for pigeons' presence in things. One more weird thing here, just since we're on the pigeons. This is Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Um, I did a lot of research here that I'm not going to include. Um, but they have this upside down house there. Um, and just this clip of this video, I wanted to just show you. I thought it was, well, if it wants to do an ad then I really don't care to show you I'll leave you the link for that though um, but let's <laughs> let's get back into the water again though the pigeon ominous right after all of uh, the things I was just discussing there is important to note here this very ominous bit with saying Trump will be dead soon as a related search to Trump pigeon But so with all of that, let's go back into the water, but let's let's do it in a slightly different way here for a moment. I want to put it in the context of looking at it from the 
predictive program I feel we got from this movie, The Big Short, uh, which was a write-up of the events that led up to the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. Uh, you can see here, also known as global financial crisis, considered by many economists to have been the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, the 1930s. And so essentially you have this man, Michael Burry, uh, who turns out to be quite brilliant, seeing that the housing market is going to collapse. And so um, to the just, uh, you know, <laughs> torment of those around him, he's persistent in this, but ends up um, increasing his um, whole investment 489% and making a profit of $2.69 billion. Um, and the end of the movie has this bit here that says, right, it's this quote, and it says, Michael Burry is focusing all of his trading on one commodity, water. And so to me, again, that's just putting emphasis on water to a demographic that might not really think about it, right? The economists out there, the money grubbers out there um, who might not really stop to appreciate beauty or think about, you know, the terror that lie in the elsewhere. They have to bring it to them, you know, in this sense. And so there's also a really um, renowned book, The Great White Sharks of Wall Street, something along those lines, but um, that will tie into these ideas of Jaws that we're about to get into. But I do want you to see here just these interesting uh, facts about water, okay? Um, and just how <laughs> it could very well be the cataclysmic piece that Michael Burry is banking on it to be. This is a timeline that you can go and look at and see all of the major issues that have come up in regards to just battling over water. Um, or how others have sabotaged each other through it. So it's really, really a fascinating bit there, and I'll, I'll leave you all of that so you can keep exploring. But let's take a look here now. Let's get into it. Let's look at Jaws. Let's talk about sharks. This is the part of the video. It's, it's like when you go to the, the aquarium, you're always waiting to get to the sharks. I'm waiting to get to the sharks um because it's where i feel they've got the most energy put into all of this all right so this is the guinness world Records site just clarifying that jaws was the first film to be declared a summer blockbuster exceeding 100 million dollars at the box office and so i mention that because it's always a uh, contested bit you know it's so say but it's important because yes that was the movie that got enough people out there to create that record, to always have Jaws on the books, this beast from the sea um, on the forefront of everybody's mind, all right? And so I've got a little bit of write-up here just exploring this idea of, you know, the fear of something that cannot be seen. And again, this is the same as something like an economic collapse. Um, and you cannot see it until it is too late. And so people um, enjoying themselves amid something that they know is dangerous, but are just not being as cautious because they want to have fun. And so, right, again, this perilous is thinking about swimming. This is also a metaphor for um, just existing in the world that we do and knowing the true cost that everything that we indulge in comes at and that there at some point has to be a savage consequence and kickback from all of that, all right? So the film, right, based on this great white shark, all those words, five letters, that's a triple five. If you don't know about that, you have to figure that out. Um, but look here with Mr. Steven Allen Spielberg. A lot of peculiar things about the man. Um, but one of the things that most certainly stood out to me was he's knighted, um, and not only by the queen, but then he also, Omri, um, if it's what I'm thinking it is, is the Italian version of that. Um, but so take a look at this, though, because this is this article from CBS about him being knighted. Um, right, it's just a symbolic gesture, um, since he's not, right, doesn't fit the rules of this whole charade. Um, but you can see here that he was knighted on January 29th in 2001 
And it's just peculiar to me that they put E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Jaws as his forefront movies on the same line. Um, you know, and again, in thinking about creating this idea of terror from the water, what I said earlier about it's an anagram for E.T. war, on and on. But what I want you to see here is um, that from when the day that Spielberg there was knighted to the September 11 attacks of 2001 was actually 32 weeks and two days. That is that nice skull and bones number there. And so with him being knighted, him being a director, that being a directed and orchestrated event, um, it's very, very <sighs> peculiar, right? Compelling to me. But so there's something else here, though, because with him being one of the most acclaimed directors in history and with him getting his true start out of Jaws, all right, and I want you to see this over here, um, that that was his breakthrough production, um, you really have to wonder how this connects with this beast from the sea idea. At least I do for a number of reasons. Now check this out. In Beast Out of the Sea, in Revelations, let's get to it here. You see that the beast is given this numerical value of 666 or 616. Now I want you to see here over on Spielberg's IMDB page it tells us that he was born at 6.16 p.m. And I'll scroll up here so you can see this is, in fact, his page. I'll scroll back down. And I also want you to see that when we break down his name, S-A-S, -S, all of those reduced to the number 1, that nice 111, that is the same English value as 666. Um, so that is the reduced value of that. And all of his <laughs> his name is 20 letters, and that is the Aeon card or the Judgment card brought forward. And just thinking of this Beast from the Sea idea, again, you can't help but <laughs> take an image like this and see how they're really, really fucking with you and me, everybody, right? Um, but something big to come with that right something absolutely major to come but so we'll talk about this idea of a leviathan here in just a second because that's the other really big uh, biblical beast of the sea notion um but take a look at this over here shark week obsessed right as a culture in the states here with it longest running cable television programming event in history that's the quote from their page now Let's connect this, though, because Trump and Stormy Daniels have this whole running bit about they watched Shark Week when she went over there. And so if we take a look at this article, and this is from this year, and this is from March 26th, and the reason, you know, and I'll get into the reason I'm obsessed with that date in a second here. But take a look at this article because it talks about them meeting on July 29th, 2007. And remember, I have a whole video on July 29th. It's connection to the Pilgrim Society. It's direct connection to Trump um, and being uh, watch the damn video. Um, but so, of course, that's the day that this is going down. But take a look at this um, from 9 to 11 on that day. You have them watching Ocean of Fear, Worst Shark Attacked Ever. Now, the film told the story of the sinking of the USS Indianapolis, the ship whose fate Robert Shaw so memorably recounted in Jaws. All right, these are directly connected. This is all spanned and paced to fit the way it does. Take a look at this here from... July 29th of 07 when they were watching Shark Week and this whole affair bullshit to August 19th of this year. You've got this nice 44 hidden. You've got this 1122 hidden. So, of course, 1122, the day that Kennedy was assassinated, and 326, as in March 26th, 
Um, it was the actual numerical day of that year. And why I want to drive that point home is because you can see um, that outside of uh, one in touch weekly, clearly out of touch here, everybody's writing this up on March 26th. And then the ones de de uh, deviating from that would be the 515 article on it. Again, think back to our very beginning piece with the who and January 19th again reversing that you have that 9-11 but you see everybody else writing that up on that 326 there so to me um, that is in no way coincidental and let's make sure let's see what we've got coming up next here so let's take a look they're watching ocean of fear oh oh and F reduced to six. So you've got another triple six there. It's an 11 letter phrase. We're back to the path of Teth, Our Lady Babylon. When we look at the gematric value for worst shark attack ever, you see that it has the same coding as President Donald J. Trump, right? Directly connecting us here. You also see though, we have references to psychological operation and mind control techniques and psychotronic weapons. Now, this is interesting, and yes, there are patents on psychotronic weapons that you can research and find, but here's an article that I'll leave you discussing how they're able to embed actual ideas and thoughts into our minds over frequency manipulation. Um, and again, this exists in Hollywood. This exists in music. If you're into it, they're in it, right? It's there. But let's go back can read through this further but one of the things that I want to get into here is the tagline from Jaws before we start talking about um, the reptiles under the water and how that connects tagline from Jaws and how all of this essentially connects is this idea of don't go in the water and you see here that the water we have um, or excuse me for that phrase President Trump the second 9-11 right the Willis Tower part of why I looked at that 819 date a moment ago with Trump was to reiterate this 198 because um, apparently most other countries would look at the date as 198. So again, you see here these references to weather mod, the UN history repeating, the resurrection, end of the Antichrist, and all things being revealed. Now, fascinating again because let's look at a movie that came out on the 4th of April this year, that 4-4 again, Rampage, right, in which we saw <laughs> mutated monsters destroying Chicago and bringing down the Willis Tower, the Sears Tower. Again, I did a whole video on that um, a year or so ago, um, and again, this is more programming showing you the inevitability of that eventually coming to. Of course, remember the zip code for that building. It is its own zip code is 60606. Right? Now, the creature that arguably brings the building down in the end is the one that comes out of the water. It is the giant crocodile beast and is the most intimidating of the three without a doubt. And this gets us wrapped around to these ideas that will eventually bring us into um, Leviathan and Godzilla. But look here, this is uh, from Lake Placid. And it's a movie about a giant crocodile terrorizing, right, quote unquote, an area. And you have this man who comes out here that they're talking about. And he, and I'll just, he, this guy, it's a conversation. He says, how much of a wacko is this guy? And the response is, well, the thing about Hector is he takes this crocodile business very, he thinks they're godly. Um, and then this guy's asking him what? And he says, in his defense, every primitive culture known to man deified them. Ancient China, Egypt, Australia, Asia. Going back in history, crocodiles have been more worshipped than Jesus. And this is something that's definitely talked about quite a bit, by, especially by the likes of David Icke. Um, but see here as well, uh, the guy responds, is this supposed to make us take him more seriously? And right, the response is no, he's a mythology professor saying that he believes they're divine conduits. Um, the guy then responds saying that he's a fruitcake the other person responds, we should just get some sleep, right? Again, let's close our eyes to this. Let's not spend too much time talking about this. But 
course, that lying at the heart of the importance of so much of this um, information and being able to bring it across there. But now, um, and for the Leviathan bit here, um, you know, it's there's a tremendous amount of research here, but again, these ideas comparing them to dragons, serpents, um, any sort of reptilian creature, the connection to the elitists pushing all of this, right, with this whole satanic Bible, is they have Leviathan representing, of course, the element of water, um, but actually using his initials on their signal um, to represent him on the actual cover of their book. So again, this idea of the water being the thing that people should most fear, because that's what people usually reference when they're thinking about Satanism is Leve, Leve, Leve. Um, and right, that mainstream bit there, and that's a conditioning to fear the water. Um, but so you've also got the guy from Cloverfield coming out of the water and, um, Godzilla is a really big one as well because it connects these ideas of nuclear testing, right? That's how he's woken, comes out, destroys everybody. Right? They constantly revitalize that franchise every, every, you know, so often, and uh, keep it fresh in everybody's mind again right reptiles coming from the sea nuclear conflict being involved i'm sure there's all sorts of other aspects with those films um but you know really that wraps everything about up the whole thing that i'm looking at here is the dates between starting on the 222nd day august 10th um and again i can just show you a lot of the coding that goes with the 810 there and how it's just been massive bits uh, that I've talked about in the past and things that we've talked about in this video today. Again, you see the ideas of terrorism, the Thelemic Order, Wall Street, the Rothschilds, the Final Step, okay, all these pieces associated with that 810. Remember 135, this other number. If we reverse it and add it together, it is also in this, uh, another triple six. Um, and then, you know, that warning's going through 828. And again, this is a Pez theory number. It's the same as Donald Trump as well. Um, it's the same as the written address of the Willis Tower, again, which I was just talking about being brought down. Same as a great architect, Master Mason, all these pieces, right, that are huge that we've gone into today, right? Behind the 11, okay, behind the path of Teth, the number 7, okay, on that same bit with the Our Lady Babylon. All of it, right, interconnected there. So very, very important and, uh, you know, with that 828, right, today's August 4th, it is the 216th day of the year. Um, and again, 216 is the number when we uh, multiply 6 times 6 times 6. All the things I've talked about with that in the past. But, uh, yeah, so now it's out there. Um, there is one other bit here I could leave you... Um, if we think back to where we kind of started with that Who song, Water, one of the things that he talks about in there is good water. He says it's what everybody needs. Um, and so it is just interesting that when we type that in, saying everybody needs 666, everybody needs number 7, right? Everybody needs these things, um, and especially they're connected to those numbers that I was just showing you. Um, but again here, these references to the hexagram being a mark of the beast, um, and, oh, there you go, back here, deceptive tactics, the key of the rituals, right, like I was talking about earlier, um, you also see here the 9-11 attack, dissolution is the great flood, okay, everything I've talked about throughout this video, reiterated, okay, and let's take one more scroll through here because I do believe you have August 10 extend written in here and I just wanted to make sure that I could get that in here but this reference to that 810 all right and the reference to all these other things I've just shown you again here you see Leviathan cross all the pieces all right all of the pieces
murder, murder, murder. Again, I don't want to go through here, but you can see hoaxes, August 10 here, right? The abyss is right there. All news is fake, right? Which to a large extent, <clears throat> obviously going outside of Trump's thing. But anyways, do with the information what you will. Like I say, I had to put it out there. Um, I say, yeah, I hope, <laughs> I hope that it resonates. I do. Um, I hope, yeah, please be well.